but it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> they still hate you. <laughs> still hate. Welcome back to Movie Buffers, and tonight I will be reviewing the movie A Soldier's Story. A Soldier's Story is a 1984 American drama film directed by Norman Jewison, adapted by Charles Fuller from his Pulitzer Prize winning 1981 off-Broadway production A Soldier's Play. A black military officer who is also a lawyer is sent to investigate the murder of a black sergeant in Louisiana near the end of World War II. It is a story about racism in a segregated regiment of the U.S. Army commanded by white officers and training in the Jim Crow South in a time and place where a black officer is unprecedented and bitterly resented by nearly everyone. The movie was nominated for three Academy Awards for Best Picture, Supporting Actor, Adolph Caesar, and Screenplay Adaptation, Charles Fuller. This movie hit home on so many levels for me. The first is that my grandfather, Charlie Hickerson, who raised me, was a soldier in World War II and probably experienced many of the themes of this movie. He had to deal with the racism, segregation, and dehumanization of Jim Crow as he wanted to fight for his country, a country that didn't want him, wanted him to just go away. Not unlike the country we live in today, though we, as blacks, still want to live, fight, and die for a country that hates us. But I digress, as usual. The other level that hit home is the main theme of this movie, a theme that is of inner racism, which is a homegrown black phenomena, a confidential black self-hate, if you will, what we don't like to talk about, a secret of pain that is only for family, the black race family. You know how whites seem to think that we all know each other? Well, there is some truth to that. We do kind of all know each other. Well, if they are brothers and sisters, that is because not all are. We're not a monolithic group. Ever walked in on a couple of blacks talking and all you hear is mm-hmm or yeah, you know, or subtle giggle? Those are codes that only blacks know. We can do a whole conversation on those types of codes alone. Even our voices will change. We talk to you one way and another way to our brothers and sisters. You never noticed? <laughs> Interesting. This particular theme in the movie is about how there are blacks who seem to be stuck in a quote-unquote slavery mode and do not want to progress and move up and out of the cotton fields, the ghetto, and the shuck and jive BS of the black past. Therefore, they have to go. See? They say we're fighting hip -hop, but they won't let us in the game. Lord, yes, it's a lowdown. Well, well, Yes, it's a low down. Yes, well. Girl, it's taking shape. Oh, sing it for Big Mary, a little sweet thing. Well. Left on the joint, it's our man. Won't somebody tell me who's the blame? Yeah, yeah. Well, we Memphis, played by Larry Riley. There is no accident his name is Memphis. When I moved from my birthplace of New York City to Tennessee permanently after the death of my mother, I think my eyes were very similar to those of Sergeant Vernon Waters. He saw an oddity of people stuck in a time and actually loving it, believing in it. 
stuck in the Southern life and liking it. What the hell is wrong with them? He represents blacks who love the old down-home blues, old Christian hymns, and those old slave stories which were transformed into country black myths. I bet you're from Mississippi too, ain't you? Yes, sir. Well, I used to hear them at the uh, Bandana Club outside Camp J.J. Riley. Folks used to come from everywhere, Wilkie. Folks be dancing, sweating. Reminded me of a place I used to go in France. Ah, the whiskey. The women. Place called the Café Napoleon. Where you learned to play, son? My daddy taught me so. You play pretty good, boy. <laughs> okay, wasn't that good? Well, yeah, that was good, Sarge. Take it easy, son. It is a soothing story of how slavery was hard, but not so bad because we have the Lord Jesus Christ to protect us and welcome us home when we die. What a load of horse shit. Those southern shacks, fields, and hole-in-the-wall juke joints need to die and burn into the sands of time. And they called him Sarge. And Damn. You. <laughs> Gotta watch what you say. Gotta watch what you do. Cause that low down dirty water is gonna roll over you. Lord, 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 yeah. Knock it off. You don't need no more of that guitar picking sitting around the shack music today, CJ. Sergeant Vernon Waters, played by the late great Adolph Caesar, understood this, and correcting this demon of slave mentality was his goal in life. He had tried everything, being a good soldier, a good American citizen, did what he was told, but nothing worked. He was still ridiculed and not respected for his achievements. He felt that the only barrier to the black people's success was this old way of thinking and acting, the Southern slavery way. He had to annihilate it, to destroy it. C.J. Memphis was the embodiment of it, so he had to destroy him. One less inward in the world. So that's what he did through psychological warfare, the most damaging and effective of all warfare. Why are you doing this to me, sir? The black race can't afford you no more. Oh, there used to be a time we'd see somebody like you singing, clowning, yassa bossing, and we wouldn't do anything. Folks like that. You were good. Homey kind of nigga. When they needed somebody to mistreat, call a name or two, they paraded you. Reminded them of the good old days. Not no more. The day of the Geechee is gone, boy. And you going with it. We can't let nobody go on believing we all fools like you. Private Wilkie, played by Art Evans, used to be a sergeant himself until he was demoted by Sergeant Waters for being drunk and disorderly. Waters thought the hard lesson would teach him to get it together and take his place in the army more seriously. Wilkie saw the demotion to be cruel and harsh. Sergeant Wilkie, you're a non-commissioned officer in the army of a country at war. The penalty for being drunk on duty is severe in peacetime. So don't bring me no us poke colored folks can't do nothing unless they drunk shit as an excuse. You're supposed to be an example to your men. So I'm gonna put you in a stockade for 10 days and take them goddamn stripes. Now wait a minute, Sergeant, you put my- Teach you a lesson. You're in the army. Colored folks always running off at the mouth about what they're gonna do if the white man give them a chance. You get it? And what do you do with it? You wind up drunk on guard duty. I don't blame the white man. Why the hell should he put colored and white together in this war? You can't even be trusted to guard your own quarters. He began to see the type of man Sergeant Waters truly was. He wasn't his friend. He would be the one who would give the true insight into Waters' character to Captain Davenport. Howard E. Rollins, Jr., from In the Heat of the Night, plays Captain Davenport, the first black officer the regiment has ever seen. Davenport made it clear that he has the same power that any of the white officers did, and proudly. 
he had achieved his rank by going to law school and earning his rank through college without a college degree you cannot be an officer in the military and no matter how high you climb without that degree you will hit a ceiling especially for blacks but it's more than just about rank that blacks in the military or today in the corporate world wants they want respect and that is very hard to find in white america i can't tell you how many times i have been passed over for a position and had to train someone who did not have a college degree and did not have as much experience as i did for that position but again i digress denzel washington played p f c peterson peterson represents the kind of anti-hero of the story by recognizing who waters was from the beginning he was saw just joking pete he don't mean no harm no he does i mean we're taking her from them white boys yes you do and if it wasn't for you southern niggas white folks wouldn't think we was all fools well where are you from england Okay. Looks like we got us a wise-ass Alabama boy here. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, don't you get smart, nigga. Get your fucking hands off me! He was a brash young man full of anger who admits that he has seen the kind of black man like Waters many times. The story doesn't really say where his hatred of Waters comes from, but I would think it might stem from his father or men in his life as a child who acted that way and who despised their own kind so when he came across waters it was the last straw for peterson actually peters and waters were the different sides to the same coin they were both fed up with the black condition in america and both were at their brink in life unfortunately for peterson his brink came as a young man they were both brought to the edge and committed murder out of their own inner rage this is a very emotional movie that speaks very specifically to the black condition in america i hope that you would take the time to watch it enjoy it think about it and if you haven't seen it in a while pick it up and watch it all over again and think about it in the terms of today like i've said about many of the black movies that i've reviewed everything that they did back in the 60s and 70s all those themes all those conditions that we were living in then is still going on right now if not getting worse director norman jewison who is also known for in the heat of the night moonstruck and the thomas crown affair brought this amazing movie to life many of the cast members worked for scale or even less under a tight budget with columbia pictures no one really wanted to make this movie a black story it was based on world war ii and those themes were not popular at the box office warner brothers turned it down as did universal and mgm howard e rollins jr had just received an oscar nomination for his role in ragtime and was cast as the lead most of the cast came from broadway careers but only adolf caesar denzel washington larry riley and william allen young appeared in both the movie and the original off-broadway play with the negro ensemble company in the new york city version the soldier story movie was shot entirely in arkansas bill clinton who was the governor at the time dropped by during the shooting he became very enthused about the project and later helped by providing the arkansas army national guard in full regalia for a grand scene since jewison could not afford to pay any army of extras also i would be remiss not to mention that robert townsend played corporal ellis as a driver for captain davenport i give this movie five stars this is a powerful story. It is more than just a movie about a history lesson and how blacks entered the World War II fight and were proud even though they were not truly wanted by America. This is the history where blacks, despite slavery, once freed, wanted to give to the country they called home, which was America, the United States. This is not only history, but the present feeling of African Americans. We are patriots, soldiers, and we are proud that our ancestors fought, died, and built this country with their literal blood, sweat, and tears. Thank you for listening, and until next time, peace, two fingers.